All right. Well, it seems like we have a good group of folks joining us now, so we'll get going. So welcome, everybody. I hope everyone is doing well, staying safe, and we're so happy to have you join you today. I am Laura Aiken, the Director of Graduate Career Development, if we haven't met already. And I'm joined here today by Leah, which is very exciting, who is a recruiter from QuickBase, here to deliver some key tips on virtual networking. As you think about really jumping into your summer, I'm sure top of mind is how you're going to expand your network. And it's important to be strategic and thoughtful in how you're doing it. So what better way than to hear quick tips from a recruiter? So with that, I will pass it over to Leah momentarily. I did just wanna go over some logistics. You'll notice on this webinar, there is a Q&A feature on the bottom of the screen. This is where you can ask questions throughout the presentation. And some questions might be interjected throughout as I see the questions. Otherwise, feel free to give a thumbs up to any question you really like and it will escalate it to the top of the queue. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll be sure that those questions are answered by Leah and or myself. You're also welcome to add anything into the chat, but we will primarily just be using the Q&A function. With that, I did just want to let you know this will be recorded. So afterwards, I'm happy to share this with everyone who's able to attend today. And now I'd like to toss it over to Leah. Thanks for well being here today. Great. Thanks, Laura. Thanks for having me. Um, so my name is Leah Masher Giacomo. Um, as Laura said, I'm a recruiter with QuickBase. Um, we um, have, well, we're very excited um, to, oh, Oh, there we go. We're very excited um, to share all of this information that we can with you and give you some tips. Um, I do just want to point out that this is from experience from myself and the five other recruiters on my team. So, of course, um, you know, we only have so much time, so we're going over five of them. Um, but keep in mind that, you know, there's other things that we are more than welcome to help you with. Um, and also, you know, I'll try and share um, everything as best I can with you after as well. Um, so that said, uh, we'll get into it. Um, and like Lara said, if you have any questions, please feel free to throw it in the chat um, and we'll talk after. Um, and if anyone has any issues hearing me or something like that, let uh, Lara know in the chat and she can um, let me know as well. Great. Ooh. Great. So first off, um, if you haven't heard of QuickBase, um, we are a low-code business application platform. Um, so essentially, if you think about CRMs or kind of like Excel on steroids is how I kind of like to explain ourselves to candidates and customers. Um, so for an example, QuickBase actually runs on QuickBase because we use it for IT ticketing system. Um, so if you have an issue maybe with your computer um, or any other tech things, then you would fill out a form online in QuickBase and then that would kick off a notification to um, our IT team and then they could take care of it. Uh, we also use QuickBase for onboarding new employees. I'm actually the person that would put uh, you, your information, your resume, everything, your hiring manager, anything um, that is needed that we um, in HR uh, would like to see. And that again would kick off um, other notifications to other teams, letting them know that you are with us. So that's just a couple of examples of how QuickBase uses QuickBase, um, but we do reach the top uh, Fortune 100 companies, which is pretty exciting. So like Southwest uses us for their check-ins. Um, Google uses us for um, compliance and auditing, and Home Depot is also another customer of ours that uses us for um, inventory purposes. And that's just a few different um, examples. Great. Oh, sorry, I have to click the arrow. <laughs> um, great, so like I said, we're gonna focus on five networking tips. Um, so the first is utilize LinkedIn and your network. So first I'd just like to start that if you don't already know, LinkedIn is our biggest tool or like the most popular tool that we use um, as recruiters, especially at QuickBase, um, because we will source, which basically means that we are looking for candidates like yourselves um, to fill whatever role it is that we need to fill. Um, and so it's really important, especially right now with what's going on, to have an online and specifically a LinkedIn profile um, and presence, uh, because that way we can get connected with you faster um, and we can get your information all in one place. So that said, I thought I'd share some did you know facts. Uh, the first being that, did you know that adding a photo to your profile actually makes you 36 times more likely to receive a message from us? Um, there's many times where we will find 
uh, candidates or just people on LinkedIn who don't have a photo or sometimes they have a photo of their dog, which is very cute, um, but that's not going to necessarily help you um, and help us figure out who you are um, and, you know, and continue the conversation. So definitely use a photo, use a professional photo um, and like, just make sure that it's professional. That's all I can really say, because uh, again, the dog is cute, but it's not the dog that's applying. Um, the second is list your skills. Um, so members who list at least five skills of their, on their profile receive 17 times more profile views. Um, and so what I mean by skills is there's actually the feature to use like the plus sign and put your skills. Um, and I'll get into that in a minute why that's important. Um, and then make sure to also include as many details as you can. Um, it can even look uh, just like your uh, resume if you want it. Um, but you want to make sure to provide any information about any of your experiences, your education, um, anything like that. Um, also, if you're interested in a company, we want to make sure that you know that most, hopefully all companies um, have a LinkedIn profile themselves. Um, so that way you can go on, you can see any job listings that they might have, like we um, update that every day. Um, you can also see any updates that might be shared on LinkedIn. Um, and another cool trick is that you can actually see the other people that are working there as long as they listed um, their, their company on their uh, page. Next, um, listing your location and industry is really important because it helps us, again, when we're sourcing, to figure out where you're located. Um, so, for example, if you, or for myself, I would put that I work at QuickBase um, and that it's in Cambridge, Massachusetts, because if I decided to just put QuickBase, um, if a recruiter is looking at my profile, they might think, okay, that's great, and I see they're headquartered in Cambridge, but I could be a remote employee. Um, I could be seeking opportunities elsewhere. So just make sure that you um, share that information um, as you are updating your profile. Um, and last, you also want to make sure to boost your connections. Um, connect with as many people as you can, as you're comfortable with. Uh, like I said, if you go to our company page, you can see the list of all the folks that work at QuickBase. Um, so the more people you know, uh, the better it looks for you, but also just, you know, it's a two-way street, it helps you, but it also helps us kind of get to know who um, is in your network as well. Um, if we wanted to do a reference or anything like that, um, it goes a long way. Oops, sorry, I keep doing that. Um, so I thought I'd share an example of a poor LinkedIn profile. Um, as you can see, I just took the screenshot of the details uh, to keep it anonymous. Um, but basically what I'm showing here is that, yes, this person put where they worked and how long they worked for in their title, but that's really not enough. Um, I have no idea what their accomplishments are. I have no idea what their responsibilities are. Um, so just make sure, you know, some people I think still think that they only have to have like a high level on LinkedIn, but more and more now um, that everything is online and that recruiters are using LinkedIn um, recruiting tools, you wanna make sure that you have everything listed on there. So that said, this is a lot more substantial. This is an example of a good profile. Um, as you can see, this person writes their responsibilities. Um, I know that, I think Laura told me at Bentley that um, for your resume, you might want to use different words, um, more like actionable words and things like that. So that's totally okay. This is just an example of one profile. Um, as a recruiter, I know that at least on our team, um, that is not as important to us. We just want to make sure that we can see what your accomplishments are. Any metrics, always share metrics, um, whether it's, you know, it's so... I always give the example of being in more of like an outreach role that people say, well, how do you tie metrics to that? So I'll explain like click rates for any of my campaigns. Um, I might explain that my audience is of 500 people, which is um, essentially the um, amount of people at QuickBase, it's like 475, um, things like that. Uh, Cause you really wanna make an impact and you know, you get that one chance on LinkedIn and your resume uh, to really highlight those skills and those accomplishments. Moving on. Um, so like I mentioned, we as recruiters and LinkedIn can uh, look up a lot of different things and these are just some examples of the elements and like keywords. So you wanna make sure that you have uh, the right job title that you're either that you're currently in or that you're looking for. 
Um, you want to have, like I said, that location is important. If it's remote, you do have the option to write remote. Um, and then also, again, add those skills, have people endorse you um, if they haven't already. You can even add recommendations now. Um, people can also leave comments. So take it full advantage of that because we can see that. Um, and then also, again, make sure to list your companies um, and any education. Um, and as you can see on the right, that's kind of what it looks like on our side when we look. So it's pretty crazy the different filters we can put on there. But um, that's why it's really important. I can't stress enough how um, you should list as much information as you can. Oh, and also make sure that your profile um, is public. <laughs> There's a couple times when I've gone to different people's profiles and I can just see their photo and their title. And unfortunately, that's all I know about them. So make sure uh, you play around with the settings a little bit too. Feel free to open it in incognito or send it to a friend to make sure as well. It sounds kind of silly, but it happens. Great. The second trick or best practice is to reach out to recruiters. And what I mean by that is um, if you, so for example, if you're applying to QuickBase, we recommend that you reach out to us, um, not necessarily to like a staffing recruiter, but if there's a specific company that you have in mind and you want to work there, then definitely, you know, take that time and look um, at their contacts page and make sure to reach out to them. Um, so that said, I wanted to give a couple of examples of outreach that I have received. Uh, I wrote it to myself, um, but it's actually pretty much word for word for a couple of, um, from a couple of people that have reached out to me even in the last week, um, both poor and good outreach. Um, so the first was, Dear Leah, my name is John Doe and I'm a marketing major at Bentley. Please let me know of any marketing opportunities at your company. Thank you, John. Um, it's a very nice message, but it's very limited. I All I know is that this John Doe is a marketing major, um, but I don't know when they're graduating. I don't know what kind of role specifically they're interested in. So I thought that I'd give the second example, which is at least gives me a little more insight. Um, and it says, Dear Leah, my name is John Doe. I'm a marketing major at Bentley. I graduate this upcoming May and will be available to work starting on June 1st. In fact, I've recently applied your marketing associate role and would love the opportunity to speak with you on the phone to learn more about the opportunity and QuickBase as a whole. Please let me know if you have time to talk this week. I can be reached at either email or that number. <laughs> I hope to hear from you soon. Uh, so the reason that this second message is a lot more uh, marketable, um, that you will 99.9% .9 receive a response. I can't speak for the other recruiters outside of QuickBase, that's why I'm saying that, um, because you state who you are, you state when you're graduating, when you're ready to work, you showed initiative, initiative that you took the time to look at our careers page and even found a job that you're interested in. Um, so let's say you go to my, our careers page and you don't necessarily see something that you love, but maybe there's some uh, roles or qualifications and responsibilities that you liked in a few different job positions, then, you know, don't hesitate to reference that in your outreach and say, you know, I saw this marketing associate role. Um, there's some things that I thought I'd be really good at, but I was wondering if there might be, you know, something more senior or something similar to it available now or in the near future. Um, so just, you know, share as much information as you can in that initial outreach. Uh, make sure to also uh, state when you're available. Uh, I think it's always great when people say time to talk this week instead of just let me know time because it shows that you really um, are invested and would like to speak sooner than later. Um, of course, always leave your email and your phone number. Um, I know we might be able to find it on LinkedIn, but just in case, it's definitely important to um, state that as well. Um, and just end it with, I hope to hear you from you soon. Um, at least I know on our team, we have a three business day rule and we're really, really good at um, keeping to that. Um, but again, if you, we will only really respond to that if you can share um, more information about yourself and what you're looking for. Because, you know, again, two way street, we want to help you. Um, and we hope that you're the right person uh, for QuickBase or in this case, whatever company you're applying to. Great. So the third is review job description. It seems pretty simple, right? Uh, everyone looks at a job description and you're like, great, this is the job I want to apply for. And that's awesome. But I think it's important to really call out the reason that I highlighted some of these responsibilities um, is because there's times where we'll, when we will speak to a candidate on a phone screen 
Um, and they might ask a question like, for example, I don't know if you could see my mouse, but the line that says consistently reach daily goals of calls and emails per day. Um, there's times where a candidate might come on the phone and say, so I was just wondering how, how do you reach out to your customers? Like, what do you do? Um, and it makes us kind of think like, well, did this person read the job description and see that you will be calling and you will be emailing? Those are the two main methods of communication. Um, so it's important to really understand uh, the role that you're applying for. And that way also you can tailor it to your resume and cover letter. Um, uh, note on the cover letter, we don't uh, typically require a cover, cover letter. And if you have the option to um, attach one, I would say, why not? Um, but just keep it clear and concise, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, but at least for your resume and for your LinkedIn profile, um, if there's specific roles that you're um, applying to, try and take some of these responsibilities and reflect on what you've done and make sure to highlight them. Uh, we kind of make a joke of how um, when you look at a job description that you should be able to almost copy and paste <laughs> Uh, the things that are listed onto your resume um, and that will be able to tell you if uh, this might be the right role for you. If you like it, um, then apply. And then on the second page, I also wanted to make a note about the qualifications. Um, sometimes people will ask me, especially students will say, you know what, I noticed on this job description that it says one plus years or two plus years in this case of sales. But you know what, honestly, I, I've never worked a day in life on the, you know, on the phone selling anything. Um, should I apply? Um, I think you should always apply unless you really think it's a stretch only because it doesn't hurt to apply. You never really know. Um, and then another thing is that you, at least for this uh, particular job description, um, you can learn on the job. Um, so it's really important that you, you know, take into account of what the qualifications are, but also understand that there's things that you can learn on the job as well. Um, as you can see at the bottom, it says intellectually curious, excellent writing communication skills. Those are definitely transferable skills and qualifications. Um, so just make sure that you highlight that in your resume um, and make sure that you um, also use examples and think of examples that you could speak about in your um, interview as well. Um, and then take advantage again of this qualifications, of these responsibilities to really prep for your interview and think of thoughtful questions um, because we're trying to give you as much information as we can about the role. Um, so hopefully this will um, spark some interest but also um, interesting conversation. Great. So the fourth is do your research. This is one of the most important tips I could ever give you. Um, again, it sounds simple, but I think a lot of people <laughs> miss the mark on this. Um, I had a link here, but I will share this presentation um, after. Um, but uh, that link actually goes to our free builder program. Um, and so that allows you to start building in QuickBase. It takes about 20 minutes to build your first app. Um, and the reason that I'm sharing this is because there's many, many companies out there that if you just do your research, if you go to their website, play around with the different links, go to About Us, um, you will probably see more times than none um, customer reviews, you will see uh, tutorials and um, other, maybe on their YouTube channel, it'll show you what their service is like or what their product is like or um, different testimonials there. Um, and also, if you just follow, like I said, with LinkedIn or Instagram, Facebook, whatever they're on, um, you want to make sure to follow them for any updates. And really, it just gives you some more insight into um, their culture, and it gives you more things to talk about during your interview. Um, the more prepared you can be for an interview, the more you're going to stand out. Um, I know my recruiters have, we just talked about it uh, this morning during stand-up, anywhere from gosh, 10 to 30 calls a week typically. Right now it's a little slower. Um, and the people, whenever my colleagues get off the phone with someone that was really strong candidate, they're always like, wow, I couldn't believe that they knew about, you know, our Waffle Wednesdays or uh, the new product release. That was only up like a day ago. Um, different things like that because it's exciting when we feel that you're excited about it, but also know um, what you're kind of getting yourself into. 
Um, and so the more of research you can do, the better. And the second page actually shows an example of what our blog looks like right now. Um, so there's a lot of things that we're doing in response to the pandemic that you can read at your uh, own leisure. Um, and there's this fun one on the right that says an application brought Jamie Foxx, Lala, and T.I. together. That's another fun read. Um, but again, it's just, um, this is really just to help you to take advantage of the blog or any news articles. You could do a Boolean search on Google, type in the company and just filter to news or anything like that. And you would be surprised of how many things come up. Um, and, uh, oh, that said, I was going to say, always bring a pen or uh, a, pad, a pad of notebook or a notebook um, with you because it's okay if you have like questions written out ahead of time. There's no points against you or anything like that. Um, we hope that you, you know, we're here to help you. We want you to join our team um, and we just want you to get as much information as you can. So if you need to reference a blog article and write down the title as the talking point, that is great. <laughs> and then the last but not least, um, is setting up informational interviews. So um, not everyone will probably say this, but I know at least from my experience um, and from the experience of some of my recruiters uh, that um, informational interviews can really go a long way, um, whether it's with the hiring manager, whether it's with the recruiter, or whether it's just with you know anyone at uh, a company. Um, it can really give you great insight into the company, into the role, into um, whatever it may be that you want to learn. Um, and it's also just a foot in the door. Um, so I gave an example here, um, and I'll read it out loud, but it says, Dear Leah, I hope you are well. My name is Rachel, and I'm currently working as a recruiter in the higher ed space, but I have recently discovered QuickBase and wanted to ask you what it was like to work in the tech industry. I'm especially interested in what it's like to be a recruiter in what seems like such a fast-paced startup environment. Additionally, since I recruit for a fellowship program, I would love to learn about corporate recruiting and how you manage to source candidates for different departments within QuickBase. Thank you for your time, and please let me know when is a good time to chat on the phone. I look forward to connecting with you soon. Um, so this is actually uh, an example of what I wrote to um, a salesperson at QuickBase because I was this Rachel Adams. Um, I used to work at Harvard and I used to recruit for a fellowship program um, and I had never stepped foot in the tech industry before. I didn't really know that much about it except for what I saw on um, like Built in Boston pages, on uh, Venture Fizz, these are talent brand websites, and then on QuickBase's page as well. Um, so I wanted to reach out to my colleague Gabe, who has been with QuickBase for two and a half years now, um, and just get him on the phone, kind of pick his brain about what QuickBase exactly is, um, and get his thoughts about the culture and just, you know, I, I think the conversation was supposed to be 20 minutes and it ended up being 45 minutes. So to that point, um, I would definitely <laughs> not do what I did and try and, and stick to the time that is allotted for your phone call because you do want to be respectful of that other person's time. Um, you know, if you have more questions, I'm sure they'd be happy to answer it over email or you can ask if they might have time to speak again on the phone or maybe you know, meet up in person at the office or um, at a cafe, you can kind of uh, feel for it once you um, have that initial outreach. Um, but that said, once you get your um, informational interview, like I said, you want to be respectful of um, that person's time. Um, you should also take advantage of that time and maybe ask them for additional contacts, whether um, it's people within that organization or if it's their own network, um, maybe they'll tell you to connect with them on LinkedIn and shoot them a message. Um, and then also, you know, I would always say if it's, if it's something that you really want, um, so like with um, in this case uh, with Gabe, I knew I wanted to work at QuickBase. I knew I wanted to try my hand at recruiting and internal recruiting. Um, I made sure to stay in touch with him over the course of the four months um, in between talking to him and um, interviewing on site with QuickBase. Um, and I would just shoot him kind of a message uh, maybe once a month, just saying like, hey, I really enjoyed our conversation. I thought of you you know, when I saw QuickBase just brought um, in pipelines, whatever it may be, just make sure to stay um, at the top of their inbox. Um, but try not to annoy uh, that person or recruiters too much because, you know, we get an influx of emails all the time. Great. 
Um, so those are all the best practices. Um, I thought I'd put in a plug for some of the job openings that we have right now. Um, with everything going on with the pandemic, we have cut back hiring about 85%. Um, but these job openings, um, oh, I should say that we have an office in, so our head, we're headquartered in Cambridge next to the Alewife station. Um, and there's about 230-ish employees there. Um, and then we have a second office that opened last year in Salt Lake City, right downtown. Um, and right now there's about 60 or 70 or so, but I think we can, um, they're moving into a new space actually next month. Um, and that can hold up to like two, 300 people. Um, and then lastly, we acquired a company in Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, so we have a small office there right now and it's all engineers and it's about 10 people over there. Um, so that's why you'll see the CMB stands for Cambridge and SLC stands for Salt Lake City. Um, so right now we have a business development representative and a sales development representative, and those are both lead development or entry level um, sales positions. Um, we also have a tech support representative that we're looking for to help in our Salt Lake City office. Um, and we should have a marketing associate role um, opening hopefully in the next week or so um, for Cambridge. And I think that's more so entry level as well, but I can find out if you um, are interested. Um, and then this is the link to our careers page, but again, I'll share this out after. Um, and then lastly, I wanted to put in another plug for um, uh, the recruiting guild. Um, so in response to all the layoffs and the furloughs that other companies and folks are um, experiencing, we wanted to do something and try and help um, try and give back and try and you know share or volunteer our time and give advice um, and help as much as we can. So we put together this uh, group. It's uh, my whole team and then it's a few other uh, recruiters in the tech space. Um, and you can sign up through this app through on QuickBase, believe it or not. Um, and you can sign up for different services like resume review, um, LinkedIn review, um, interview prep, mock interviews, things like that. And um, we're kind of still in the works of it right now, but I know that our, our first session will be this Friday and it's um, all on resume building. And it'll actually be more interactive. So we won't just be speaking at you, we'll put something up on the screen and folks can ask questions. Uh, so this is also a great resource if you um, know of anyone who might have been laid off at this time or um, furloughed. So that said, that's all I have. Um, I will hand it back over to Laura, but thank you so much for listening to me speak at you. Um, and happy to answer any questions that uh, you might have. Great, thank you so much, Leah. This was really helpful. And we do have a flurry of a few questions. Um, one question I'll mention, because I know you just talked about open opportunities that you do still have, even though you have scaled down recruiting temporarily. And one question that came up is, are there any internship opportunities offered by QuickBase at this time? Mm, that is a great question. So I know that actually is today the, yeah, today's the fifth. So next week, the teams are actually going to decide um, whether or not they will have internships. So that's something, uh, Laura, I can follow up with you on. Um, Cause I know that that was coming up and we were trying to figure out like how it would work remotely. Um, so hopefully I will have better insight in, um, as into if we are having uh, hiring interns. Um, that said, we do have co-ops, um, so who we um, who are still working with us. So it's possible they might not at this time, and um, would offer them in the fall. But I'll let you know. Great, thank you so much. Um, and then a live question we have is actually one from Boomi. So Boomi, I'll allow you to talk and ask ask your question. Go ahead, Boomi. We can hear you. Um, yeah, I had this question where I want to know. I see on QuickBase website that we have people and go to market compensation analyst uh, role open. So, is it really open or what? Because it exactly matches my career goals as well as I have all the skills that they want. So, I want to know something more about it. Yeah, so um, that role is open. Um, I know that the time, like, you know, again, because we've cut back hiring about 85%, uh, that timeline has been shifted a bit. Uh, I don't have an exact 
date for you. Um, I could connect you with my colleague, Connor, who is running point on that exact um, job um, so that you can get more information. Um, but I'm happy to send over your information so you can speak with him. Um, he can look at your resume and hopefully you can have um, an initial phone call and he can give you more information on that. Um, but yes, it is open. I just, I don't know what the uh, fill time is right now. That's fine. Thank you so much. I'm actually looking out starting from July. So okay. well, it's going to be great if you have me. Okay. Okay. I should yeah. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, like the rest of the world, it's kind of a day by day basis right yeah. now. Um, but you should definitely talk to him. I, I can connect you both. Um, and if you haven't already applied to, uh, there's no, you can, you can apply right now, actually, um, and let him know as well. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much, Leah. You're welcome. Thanks, Boomi. Uh, and then we have a series of questions related to LinkedIn. So one question we have is, if we're looking for to actually relocate to the new a new area, how would you want to see that on that candidate's LinkedIn profile? Great. So, um, uh, actually, never mind. Um, I was going to show an example, but um, I have to get permission from that person first. Uh, so basically what I would do, um, so let's say that all of my job experience was in Boston up until this point, but I wanted to move back to Philadelphia. Um, I would write, you could, so there's two options. You could either put your location as, I would put my location as Philadelphia, um, because that means that's where I'm living now. Um, or you can put um, in your bio, if you have a bio, I forgot to mention bios, um, that you are currently you know, residing in Boston, but you are able to move, relocate to Philadelphia. Um, uh, oh, and to that point too with bios, if you do use a bio, it's definitely not required. It doesn't hurt you if you don't have it, if you don't have one. Um, I don't have one to be honest, um, but if you have one, just make sure it's probably no more than three or four sentences <laughs> highlighting, especially in this case, if you are trying to work remote or if you're trying to relocate, that would be the time to state that information. Um, but yeah, so it's two options. I would either change your location to where you want to be um, or write it um, in your bio. And when you say bio, are you referring to a resume bio or like the summary or about oh. section in a LinkedIn profile? Right, the about summary section in the LinkedIn profile. Um, in the resume, hopefully there's a place, I know that we have the option, I think, where you can say where you, like, what office you're particularly looking to work in or location, um, but I don't know what it's like for other companies, so maybe you would put that in your cover letter, um, or just make sure to send up a follow email and let that hiring manager or recruiter know that you might not be living there now, but you um, would be able to move for the job. Terrific, thank you. Mm -hmm. And an additional question, speaking of the summary or about section, mm -hmm. how would you recommend crafting the most effective LinkedIn summary? Should it be more about summarizing your experience or should it include something that the recruiter might not be able to find on their resume? Mm, that's a great question. I would keep it um, more of a summary um, just because, um, you know, we probably spend it's similar to resumes right we spend anywhere from like seven to 15 seconds on a linkedin profile um and so that said we got really good at skimming and <laughs> reading um but it really does help when folks do have that bio uh to kind of summarize and you know capture okay what is it exactly from all of my experience and for you know the role that i'm looking for don't forget that um to highlight in those you know three to four sentences because um, sharing uh, things that might, yeah, I would, I would take advantage of the phone call um, or your interview or your cover letter to talk about um, those other things, but I would try and keep it as much skills-based as you can. Great, thank you. Um, and a question regarding experience. So you mentioned earlier that sometimes there might be experience that might be maybe beyond what someone has, but it might be worth applying to. So further to that, if there's a position that says two, three, even four plus years of experience is required, however, this candidate only has internship experience and their graduate degree, what do you think about them applying to those jobs? Do you think they would be under not quite qualified or would you still recommend applying? 
we always recommend applying. I think that's one thing um, I've been very lucky both in both of my jobs, um, but especially with QuickBase, we always um, count internship or externship, whatever you may call it, um, towards uh, work experience because that is work experience. Um, so I would still encourage that person to apply. Um, but again, just it's really up to your judgment. Do you think that it's something that you could actually do if you were uh, hired, right? Um, and like I also mentioned, you can learn a lot of things on the job, but if there's something like very specific, like, you know, writing Python or knowing Python, um, where it says like advanced knowledge of Excel, if you don't actually have that, then, you know, don't lie to yourself either and, <laughs> um, and apply to that uh, because maybe, you know, there's a reason that it said advanced knowledge of um, because they're hoping that they don't have to spend that time training. So really, you know, just pay attention to those words, um, but, you know, use your own judgment as well. Um, but yeah, we definitely, to answer your question, um, we, uh, we think that, you know, um, internships, that's why we have our own interns and co-ops. Um, experience is just as important as full-time. Great, thank you. Yeah. And you can imagine with, with our students and really, many of us who are looking to change careers are worried about the pandemic. So we do have a question on, you know, any suggestions on really maximizing this networking opportunity during a, a pandemic? What tips do you have for those who are a little panicked about networking in this environment? So uh, you are not alone. <laughs> we are also a little panicked and have shifted some um, of our efforts. Um, and by that, I mean, Everything now, uh, like for this example, is online. So that said, don't hesitate to reach out to anyone um, on LinkedIn or over email. Take advantage of this time. Hopefully they might even have a little more time to respond to uh, your emails or LinkedIn messages. Um, make sure, like I said, to do your research and sign up for any or follow social media because um, that's typically where companies will put any updates or any offerings, whether it's a webinar like this, uh, whether it's a customer coming on um, on video to tell you why they love that company um, and why they use their product, uh, whether it's an employee spotlight, a day in the life. Um, I know I was just on a webinar with um, the Comparably team um, and they were saying, they, and then uh, HubSpot, the head of um, campus recruiting at HubSpot was saying that, yeah, everything now is online and that, that just means that people are going to become more competitive and people have to be um, prepared to answer, uh, field more questions on email. Um, and so if you're panicked about it, just, you know, continue, continue um, doing your research, continue, especially for the companies that you really want to work at um, and continue looking to see if there's any offerings. Like I said, if there's any tutorials, um, like you're interested in QuickBase, take advantage of our builder program, learn more about it. Um, so that way you can, you know, see if it's actually something you want to do and you're interested in um, and just take advantage of every single resource um, and don't be afraid to reach out to people. Hopefully that helped <laughs> answer that question. Yes, thank you. And, and folks, feel free to raise your hand as well and you can ask any live questions um, if something you need a little bit more clarity on. Um, but related to, to that, um, so in this environment, there is a question, what about remote work experience? That seems to be something that could be really valued and be an asset in this current environment. How would you recommend a candidate highlight that they have remote experience? Mm. So you can actually, uh, I'm trying to think, whether on your LinkedIn or your um, resume, when you put your title, like I would put recruiter, um, and then you put, I would put quick base, um, and then that location, uh, make sure to highlight that uh, it says, uh, whether you're full-time, say, remote worker, um, or if you've just kind of, maybe like me, I'm full-time on site, but um, even before all of this, I've worked remotely, um, I would, I would still say um, that you have like write a line um, that you have experiencing uh, or experience working remotely and still managing projects and delivering them on time or something like that. Um, because if you do want to work remote, I think we'll already know or a recruiter would already know that you want to work remote if the job explicitly says, you know, uh, salesperson remote territory in Nevada. Um, and then also, we were just having this conversation um, in HR. Um, 
and also just other conversations with a lot of different recruiters and um, over the last few weeks that um, we, you know, we're very aware of the time that we're in right now. Um, we're very aware that um, everyone is remote pretty much. Um, and so if you have that experience, whether you were on site and switched completely to remote um, since this started, like we're very aware of those dates. Um, and we know that uh, hopefully, you know, if we have, hopefully if you're applying and um, you're doing well at your job too, that, you know, that, that's great that we know that just shows that you um, have the capability to manage and continue work flows um, and delivering while you're at home. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, another question. Could you talk a little bit more about what topics folks should pick up when we want to keep this catch up with the people who had an information meeting? Okay, so I see how it's phrased. Um, so we, when people want to follow up, so maybe it's a month after they spoke, what do you recommend to kind of keep that conversation going? What topics keep, keep it alive? Yeah, so um, I know the example I gave was um, when I was talking with Gabe, because that was four months out before I actually applied, because I wanted to see if it was something that I would actually be interested in. Um, I made sure that, well, again, we spoke for quite a while, so a few different things came up. Um, but he mentioned, he said, you know, check out the YouTube video um, of what QuickBase is. It's like a minute and a half. It gives you a pretty good visual. Um, he was giving me some action items and I made sure that when I followed up, um, well, first I followed up that day and said, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I really appreciate it. You know, the uh, normal thank you letter email. Um, and then a few weeks later, uh, just to make sure that he hadn't forgotten about me, um, I gave him some feedback and, and asked some questions about that YouTube video that he um, had mentioned in our initial call. Um, so that said, it really kind of is a case by case. It depends on what you're talking about and what your goals are. Um, is it really just to learn about what it's like to be a salesperson um, in the tech field? Um, or do you really want to work at that company like I did with Gabe? Um, so just set your intentions um, and try and reference and again, take notes during those calls or face to face, whatever it may be, um, and bring those up. Uh, anything that you might think, keep it professional. Um, uh, like if you both watch the same show, I, I think it's okay to maybe reference it, but keep it more professional. Like, you know, you made this point about, um, professional development and that made, got me thinking about this and I saw this new news article in the Times that talked about it, I thought you might enjoy reading this. Um, so again, it, it just helps to really listen during that time um, and take notes so that you can uh, reference whatever um, might have come up during your conversation. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, another question we have is to really enhance LinkedIn connections. What do you recommend? What's the best way to really boost those connections and, and increase the number? So, um, my advice for increase, so you, again, it's, it's about intention. Um, well, one, I would say definitely connect with um, all of your alumni from Bentley, um, maybe back from high school, um, because you you never know, you know, it's all about who you know. It's not always what you know, but it's also who you know. You never know when that might come in handy if, um, if they want to reach out to you or vice versa, if you, you know, see that they're working somewhere that you're interested in. Um, but the way to boost is really, it should, once you get into LinkedIn, it'll say like, oh, these people also went to Bentley um, or, you know, once the more inform oh, so the more information you fill out on your profile, the more things you'll be prompted um, to uh, to do. But then also the more um, recommendations you'll get of like, oh, have you thought about following this group? Um, you know, because they're data mining the heck out of you, um, <laughs> or have you considered? And we saw that you were part of this uh, public relations chapter at your school. Um, these are the other people that also were in PRSSA, whatever it may be. Um, so the way to do that is just look at, think about your interests, think about the companies that you want to apply to, um, think about all the people that you want to school with, um, any internships you had, make sure to add those managers, coworkers, whoever are on there, and you'll see that it'll start to build from there. That's great. And as a follow-up question to that, we have heard from some recruiters that they like to see a minimum number of connections to really validate their activity on LinkedIn. Do you ever look at, look at the number of connections that um, candidates have? 
So I know my, or I, maybe I should speak for myself just in case. I haven't really asked my team that question, to be honest. Um, but I know that when I'm sourcing, um, I should mention too that I'm usually sourcing for uh, entry to mid-level positions. So that means anywhere from one to about five years. Um, I do not pay attention to that. Um, I think the reason that I wanted to highlight boosting your connection is yes, we want to see that you're active on LinkedIn, but we also just really are giving you the tools to help yourself. Um, again, to just the more people you know, hopefully something will come out of that. Um, but I, I think also because it hasn't come up on my team, I have a feeling that we don't pay attention to it too much. Um, but if you did have one, I think it would look a little funky. So make sure to get more than at least. I'm just gonna put a number out there, at least have more than like 50 connections, hopefully. Maybe that would be a good starting point. Great, thank you. Um, another question, would you mind talking a little bit about the employee's diversity during the recruitment? Would you share some tips for international students who are seeking job opportunities? So maybe mm -hmm. you could speak to QuickBase's approach on um, addressing diversity in the recruitment pipeline and if you are open to hiring international students and any tips you have for them to stand out. Great. Um, so I'll first, for the inter for inter uh, international students, um, it's a case-by-case -case basis on the role. Um, I will say that um, more times than none, our technical roles, so, you know, software engineer, UI, UX uh, designers, um, we are usually able to, um, to hire um, an, an international student, um, or, well, then you wouldn't be a student, but, you know, <laughs> um, an international uh, candidate. Um, but for, like, for sales, for finance, for marketing, for HR, for a lot of the other departments, it's um, harder. Um, that would be an HR question <laughs> as to why, because uh, I don't want to give the wrong information. Um, but I do know that, yes, we do consider international students, but it is more uh, for those um, technical roles. Um, and yeah, and then you can just kind of take it up with HR about sponsorship and things like that. Um, and then for the second piece, um, for diversity um, in recruitment. So there's a lot of different things there. Um, I would say that first off, um, when it comes to like LinkedIn, um, we, I know we mentioned, you know, putting a photo up. Um, that is pretty important because we do want to make sure that, you know, we know who, uh, what you, what you look like. Um, but that said, also putting location, um, those are important because really it's just, we want to have, you know, just diversity of thought. We want to have diversity of backgrounds, uh, race, whatever it may be, um, of ex years of experience, things like that. Um, we definitely take into consideration. Um, and that's just something that we continue to do every day. Um, we're actually looking into a new ATS system. And I know that there's some tools there um, that allow us. It's an interesting uh, thing that we might trial where, um, or I've heard about it, that you can actually look for people um, in, um, and without seeing their face or without seeing um, where they're from and just kind of based off of skills. Um, that's something that we might try as well. Um, but yeah, sorry, that was a very long-winded answer of diversity. Um, <laughs> but uh, I wish I had the stats about our organization. I don't have them on hand. Um, but that is something that we definitely welcome. Um, we have um, a committee on it. Um, it's DEI is very important to us um, in our everyday work um, in our the customers, uh, the people that we serve. Um, and um, yeah. Thank you. And just to clarify, um, photos are not part of the actual process during recruiting. You're just saying for LinkedIn, it's helpful to en enhance your LinkedIn yes. profile with the photo. Yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, on your link, just for in link. Yeah, you don't need to have a photo on your resume. I know some people do that, but uh, you don't need that. Um, I would take advantage of this, all the space that you have to put all of your experience. Um, but for your LinkedIn profile, yes. Uh, like I said, don't, you know, don't have your dog, don't have your sister, have your own photo on there and a professional one. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. And then a question regarding um, internship opportunities. 
um, does QuickBase hire finance majors for internships? And that might be outside of just what might become available this summer, but in general, do you see opportunities um, in the yeah. future for finance students? Yeah, um, I, so I've been uh, at QuickBase for a year now, and um, I know that in the last two years, we had two finance interns. Um, I can't remember their exact title. I want to say that one person was accounting, um, and I think the second person might have been more of like a finance generalist. Um, and so I think they were helping with different like ad hoc projects. Uh, but yes, we do have internships in probably almost every department. Um, it's more just about bandwidth. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. And that's most of the questions at the moment, but we still do have time. So let's maximize our time with Leah. So if anybody wants to raise their hand and ask a, a question live or enter it into the Q&A, we would be happy to answer them. This is, this is your time. Um, great. We have a live question. Mena, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Um, I will allow you to speak. I have the microphone off so you're or on. So you're welcome to ask your question. Uh, thanks, Laura. So my question is about hard, uh, hard software skills. For example, as graduate students, we uh, have like explored different softwares, but uh, I wonder what's the best ways to put emphasis on in my LinkedIn profile and how to make all my software skills to stand out? Great. That's a good question. Um, so for on your LinkedIn profile, when you add um, your skills um, or your languages, um, it should already populate once you start typing in. So for example, uh, like C Sharp, it should populate um, and that way, and then actually LinkedIn is, so you can't really choose you know, the format and how it reads, but we make sure to always check the skills section, um, which is typically kind of in the middle towards the bottom. Um, so as long as you have that section filled out, then you're good. Um, and it, again, it doesn't hurt body of your uh, LinkedIn profile as well um, if you might have used it in an internship or if you're showcasing a specific project that you might have given or capstone anything like that but we will always check the skills section so I think that's your best bet is making sure that that part is filled out did that answer your question <laughs> uh, yeah okay and you can actually um, put uh, whether you, uh, your level of, um, I'm trying to think, uh, uh, of experience, not experience, but you know, if you're advanced, if you're intermediate, yeah. So take advantage of that too. Thanks, Leah. Yeah, no problem. What other questions do you have for Leah? Any questions regarding QuickBase? Any other tips and tricks you're looking for from her? Any LinkedIn questions? Oh, and um, feel free to add me on LinkedIn. So now you have one connection. <laughs> um, uh, Lara, is it, I'm fine with anyone having my uh, email address, by the way. So feel free. Terrific. Thank you. I'll definitely, definitely share. And for those of you who joined today, you will also get a recording of this conversation as well for you to reflect in your own time. And then I will send um, Leah's email information and LinkedIn profile um, short name so that they can reach out to you. And what are best practices when they reach out to you? So when they connect, should they just press connect or what, what are your question? Um, so I would recommend this is uh, this is a personal preference. Um, whenever I'm at a career fair, any um, recruiting function, um, when you go to my profile, you have the um, option to just hit uh, connect, um, but you also have the option to add a message. So that is when I would take advantage of that um, feature and you know write you know like introduce yourself um, and say that you were on today's call. Um, and that way I can also just, because I can't see you either, um, but that way I know um, that you are on this call um, and that, um, that you took initiative. Um, and that really, again, that goes a really long way. Um, and if you are looking for a specific job on our website or anything like that, please definitely reference that. Um, but yeah, feel free to message me either on LinkedIn and or uh, email if you want to do both, that's fine too. But again, that's a personal preference, so I can't speak to every recruiter out there on what they prefer. 
Great, thank you. And then we do have a follow-up question on finance internship opportunities. Mm -hmm. When do they typically become available, the finance internships, and are they available traditionally during the summer period or could they be available during the academic year? So um, I know last summer we had an intern, but it, it actually, honestly, there is no season, specific season. It's really, um, because we're growing, oh, I forgot to mention that, so we're about like, I think I said we're about 450, 475 folks. And hopefully we will be double in size in the next two to three years. We really are hiring like crazy, right? Well, we were hiring like crazy before everything happened, um, but that will continue once everything starts to uh, hopefully open soon. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that said, like definitely, sorry, I just forgot the question, but <laughs> definitely, um, uh, keep that in mind um, when you're reaching out and when you're looking for jobs and applying because a lot of jobs will be posted um, online um, as things start to reopen. Great. So it's just to convert for finance internship opportunities yeah. based on demand. So the time <laughs> time frame could be summer. It could be during the academic year. It might vary. So they should look on the career website. Yes, definitely look on the careers website. Um, and you can also ask me and I'm happy to ask my finance team um, because as that team's growing, the, they will most likely need more support as well. Terrific, thank you. Yeah. Let's see, we have one chat comment here. Um, interesting, someone has mentioned that they tried to connect with you but they're unable to message you unless they pay for premium. So I think perhaps yeah. <laughs> what, what, what that may be is that you can't message yet, but you can connect. So Cindy, mm -hmm. go ahead and try and connect with her versus send her a message. Um, I'll check why that is, because I know that I've, hmm, okay, I'm gonna look into that, because I've definitely received messages when I got requests, so sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Possible my settings got toggled when I was switching my um, membership. Terrific. Well, I think those are all the questions. We have two minutes left, so if anybody wants to jump in and ask one last question, we do have the end. But otherwise, I think this was incredibly helpful. It's always great to hear insight directly from our recruiters. So thank you for joining us today, and I will be sure to share the PowerPoint, um, this, this recording, and your contact information. And thank you for supporting Bentley, and, and I hope with your growth that you see some more Bentley grads uh, fueling that pipeline, especially as things reopen. Great, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Great, thank Definitely you everyone. Reach out. <laughs> thank you so much, stay well everyone, we'll be in touch.